Hello, and welcome to How to Forge with Bracken Blades Forge. You may have seen some of my other videos like the Ganondorf Sword and the Dragon Slayer Damascus Wakazashi and some of my other small knife builds. Today, I wanted to walk you through a step-by-step -step process of taking an old farrier's rasp and turning it into a simple knife. Things that we're gonna do today are forging a tip, forging a handle, forging the bevels. That's gonna be the main focus for this video. We'll also get into shaping the knife with a grinder, cleaning it up, and putting handle scales on it. Now, one thing you should note, not all farrier's rasps are created equal. Some are case hardened and those you don't want to use. To test this, you can do one of two things. You can stick it in your forge and heat it up, harden it, and then see if a piece snaps off or bends off. If it bends, it's not hardenable steel. If it snaps, it's hardenable steel. Another way you can do this is a simple spark test by taking this, applying it to a grinder, and then testing the inner piece of the blade. The outer piece is what's case hardened, so the inner piece is what you want to test for carbon. If it has a high bright spark, like a sparkler, it has good carbon. This is a Heller's rasp. I know this one has plenty of carbon in it. Let's start forging. So there's a couple things you should know before you get started forging blades. Number one, it's dangerous. Number two, it's hot. Number three, it's fun. What makes forging dangerous is there's a lot of things that can happen. You're dealing with gas, you're dealing with heat, you're dealing with flammables all around you, you're dealing with little bitty pieces coming off. So it's very important that you have the personal protection equipment that you need. Number one, gloves, glasses, and ear protection if you want. This is not required. I recommend ear protection because I have a wife and two little children and I like to hear them. The final piece of personal protection equipment that is not required but recommended is a dust mask. This one is really important when you start on the grinder. You'll see a lot of people don't wear them. I do when I'm working on the grinder mainly because I don't like to get all that gunk in my nose. A couple other things you're going to need are a pair of tongs. If you don't have tongs, a pair of vice grips is a close second. And if you don't have vice grips, some sort of pliers or channel lock pliers. If you don't have any of those things, you can weld a stick on it. If you don't have a welder, you're not gonna have a way to hold the steel. And I don't recommend forging knives. Another thing you're going to need is a hammer. This particular hammer is a custom hammer made by my friend Street at Street Ogre Forge. Go look him up on Instagram and on Facebook. Makes great hammers. The benefit of this hammer, a rounding face here. This has all different fullers at different angles. This is great for shaping your blade, starting your bevels. It also has a flatting face. This is great for setting bevels flat, setting the knife flat, and shoring up the whole knife. This is a great hammer. If you don't have one of these, I started by making one of these. This is just an engineer's hammer. I rounded the face and this side was flat, but I made it a little bit flatter. This is an okay hammer. This is not a great hammer. Um, I use it sometimes when my arm gets tired, but that's about it. I mean, in the two scheme, grand scheme of things, if you want to start forging, spend the money and buy a hammer. And I would like it if you bought a hammer from Street Ogre Forge. It's a great hammer. And I'm really thankful that I have this. So now that the steel is up to temperature, we're going to start by striking the corner and working it down into a point. Okay, so I've got my tip where I want it forging wise. I'm gonna go over to the grinder and just grind in the rest of that tip the way I want it to look. You can use a hot file just a regular bastard file and just filing it while it's hot or you can do use a grinder angle grinder doesn't matter I'm gonna go grind this tip in the way that I want it to and then we're gonna start working on the tang I got it ground in looks good it's the shape that I want Let's start working on the tang a couple of things you're gonna be doing when you're forging your tang is upsetting the steel lengthening it out and then flattening it out to straighten it up Try to hit it equally on all sides when you're doing this. Now use the edge of your anvil to hammer in a guard and then straighten out your tang. So at this point in the blades process, you can honestly stop if you want, 
and go ahead and grind in your bevels, drill your holes for your handle. I'm not going to, I'm going to hammer in some bevels first, just set them where I want them. So now I switch to a smaller hammer. You can use a ball peen or a small flatter to just really work in the edge and also work out any bumps or anything like that, really clean up the blade and the profile before I start grinding. All right, you've reached the halfway point in the video. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying these videos, please, at the lower right screen, click the subscribe button, give it a like. Also, in the comments, leave any suggestions that you might have for future videos or how-to videos that you'd like to see. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is let this sucker cool down, and then we're going to go to the grinder, grind in our bevels, drill in our holes for our handle, give it a good, clean profile, and then we'll go in for the quench. All right, so now we're going to start grinding on this rasp knife things we're going to need to do is clean up the pommel area, clean up the tang. We're going to flatten both sides. You can see I've kind of drawn a rough profile of what I was going to do. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to kind of let it take, take form as I grind it. We've got our 2x72 set up with a flat platen. This is probably the most effective and most efficient um, piece that you're going to need. If you do get a 2x72, I'd make sure you have one of these. I'm going to start with a 60 grit belt. So now we're going to switch to 120 grit, we're going to clean it up, make it a little bit shinier, and then we're going to go to a medium coarse, and we're going to go to a fine coarse to clean up the profile and get it really shiny before the heat treat. So we're going to normalize it, we'll drill in the handle holes first before we normalize it, and then we're going to quench it in canola oil. All right, so I placed that little uh, tail to a file right there next, so you can see a color comparison. You, you want about a, a cherry red. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of show you the color that you want before you're gonna go into the quench. As of right now, you can see that this is an orange, and as the shade changes, it's more of a dark red along the edge. That is when you would want to quench this steel. Got a good hard edge on it now. I'm going to throw it in the oven and let it temper. This is a little bit of a boring part, so I'm not going to record it. Now the knife is at a point that I am happy with the finish and the overall look of the knife. The knife has been heat treated and tempered. The holes have been drilled for the handle. So let's go ahead and pick out our handle material, get our pins, and glue this bad boy up. So now that I've picked my handle material and my pin stock, 
I'm going to go ahead and tape the edge since I have the blade complete and where I want it. I'm going to tape it off and protect it. And then we're going to cut our pins to the right size and we're going to cut out our handle material. Now that we've got it rough fit together, I'm going to go ahead and mix up my epoxy, apply it to both the insides of the knife handle, and then I'm going to use some clamps to clamp it together and hold it as it glues and dries. Now as you cut your pins, go ahead and clean it up on the grinder, putting in whatever shape you'd like to the handle. I'm going to do a rough sanding all over, get it to shape, and then take a file and file in some notches. It'll look really cool. There we have it, Farrier's Rest Knife with green G10 handle scales. We're gonna go ahead and sharpen it and then we're gonna do some testing. That is a beautiful knife. So there you have it guys hope you enjoyed my video if you did please click the subscribe button in the lower right corner also give it a like i do a lot of videos like these more how-to videos will be coming out also more crazy builds if you haven't seen my two already click on the damascus dragon slayer wakazashi or the ganondorf sword this knife turned out great it's beautiful it's awesome I think I'm going to carry it for a little bit. I love it. It is for sale. If you want to buy it, just reach out to me. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thanks for watching.